Welcome back again. Uh, we're going to continue working on uh, the Linear Lights Out menu project. Uh, the goal of this project is to try to work on uh, intents and activities. Uh, so we started with a main menu uh, that gave you an option to uh, play the game. Uh, this is the one we're going to be focusing on today. Um, to change the number of buttons in the game, so you can hit 3, 5, 7, or 9. Um, and then to show a little about box, um, or you can just exit this application altogether. The goal is to uh, learn about launching different activities. So we have four different activities in this app. Um, and also to pass information back and forth uh, via intents. Um, and then at the end of the day today, we'll also talk a little bit about uh, shared preferences um, and how we can go about storing those. So where we've, uh, what we should have done so far um, is we've been working through, um, we've got a finished about, the change buttons, and our main menu. Um, if you run it again, just to kind of see where we're at, uh, right now it defaults to uh, three buttons. Um, I'll probably change that here in just a second. Uh, if you hit play, nothing happens. But if you hit change buttons, it'll say that you're currently at three. If you want to change it to seven, um, it'll change it to seven. Um, and if you want to change it to 9, um, it'll change it to 9. If you hit About, that pops up, um, and then Exit uh, kills it. Cool, so let's go ahead and start um, <coughs> figuring out what we're going to add this time. Let me find my place in my slides. Um, so we've got two down, uh, one to go. Um, it is a pretty big one, uh, so today's going to be a longer video lecture, uh, but we'll just kind of do it all, and, and, then, and then we'll be all set. So the first thing we need to do for this activity is we need to make a new class. Um, I just called my class just Lights Out. Um, and it's going to be a um, subclass of activity. So let's go ahead and add our final class onto this guy. So new class. Um, I'm going to call it Lights Out. And its super class is going to be an activity. Great. Uh, first thing we want to do when we make a new class is we want to override onCreate. Uh, so let's go ahead and find onCreate. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to um, start with just the basic step of setting our content view to r.layout. And we're going to make a new XML file. Uh, let's just call it lights underscore out. Great, so we've got the basic step done um, in the code here. I'll go ahead and keep the slides cut up. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make this um, lightsout.xml file in the layout folder um, so that we can put something on the screen. Uh, let's go ahead and add a couple resources uh, for, this, um, <coughs> for this linear lights out game. Uh, probably easiest uh, to just go ahead and go to the, the course website and find the slides to copy this. Um, so let's see, I'm on slide 52. Uh, there's a link to the course website on the top page. Um, you can go ahead and grab the uh, the lights out, um, <coughs> the download that we're going to do later, uh, but then you can get to the slides that I'm using from right here. Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy those, just because I think we've got the idea of strings. Uh, to look at what they are, um, make the buttons match. Uh, one move taken so far, percent D moves taken so far. You win. You won in one move, you won in percent D moves, and new game. So these top six are for the, the message, like the message to the user, and then the bottom one is for the button. So I'm just going to copy these strings and just paste them into my existing strings.xml file. If your strings get uh, really complex, you know, you could certainly make uh, make multiple files, uh, but it's, it's simple enough that I'll just put them all in strings.xml. Great, so now I've got some resources. Now it's time to start making the uh, XML file. Uh, just to give you an overview of what we're going to do here, um, since we don't know how many buttons we're going to get, we can't put the buttons in yet. Um, what we can do is we can go ahead and make a table for them, um, and then we'll programmatically add a table row and buttons um, to that, that table layout. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make a, a relative layout, just to get some practice with that. We're going to put the table in the center, uh, then we're going to put a text view above it, um, and then a, a new game button below it. 
Um, and then here are some of the things that we're going to use uh, when we're setting that up. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, you should you should be able to do this on your own. So I mean, feel free to pause it and just go do it. Um, but I'll just go ahead and do it live here. So the first thing I want to do is in my layout area, I want to say new. Um, I'll just use the quick key, option command N. Um, new X Android XML file. And I'm going to call it lights underscore out dot XML. Um, I'm going to have it be a, a layout and the root element is going to be a, a relative layout. So that's going to be the root. Great. Um, so the first thing I want to do um, is, well, I'll change the background real quick. Um, so I was going to go ahead and add my table layout first, but I'll change the background just real fast. Um, so kind of consistent with my app. Um, so let's go ahead and take a table layout, drag it over. I want it to be centered um, with the current uh, GUI. You just kind of had to drop it at the top, which was a pain. I'm also going to want a, um, a text view. So let's go ahead and grab a text view. I'll just drop them all at the top for now. And then a button. Sure, I'll say it's below the text view. Uh, so some things that I'll have to edit here. Uh, let's go clean it up a little bit. Um, actually, I don't need to clean it up too much um, in, the, in the code. I think I can just play with the properties directly. Uh, so let's start setting some of these properties. Uh, so the first thing I want to set um, is I want to go ahead and set the IDs just so I can get that all worked out. To make it consistent with my slides, I'm going to go ahead and look here. This one's called the button table, uh, the game state, and then the new game button. So I'm going to go ahead and call this top one the button table. And then I'll call the text view. Um, I'll call it the game state. I should probably call it game state text view. Just because to be consistent with my naming convention. Um, and then the new game button. Great. Um, and so now that we're inside a, re a relative layout, these all have a bunch of different properties. Um, you can see it put it on with a line to the top. That's just what I had to do to get it to drop. I really want it to be centered in the parent. True. And the strategy I'm going to choose to go with is I'm going to make the, uh, the layout width fill the parent. Um, and then I'll just use padding to kind of work from there. Uh, great. So um, went ahead and uh, fixed him up. Uh, let's go ahead and change these others as well. Um, there's a few other things we're going to change in the layout, but we'll get the basics done first. Um, so this text view, I want it to be above uh, the table layout. Um, notice it doesn't say the, oh, it does say the right name. Sometimes you have to make sure you save it uh, before you change things. So I do not want it to be at the top of the parent. I want it to be just barely above the button table. So I clicked on layout above, lay it out above the button table. That should kind of snap it to the middle. For the text view, I'm going to go ahead and fill width on it. Um, and I'll set the gravity to parent, or set the gravity to center. There are two ways you could choose to do this. Um, I believe in the slides I did it differently. In the slides, the other way you could have done it is you could have made it um, wrap the content on the width. Um, and then what you could do from there is you could say, center it um, horizontally within the parent. Um, doesn't really matter. Take, take your pick. Uh, we'll go ahead and set the text on this guy to some starting value. Uh, we'll set it to the game start. Um, and then, you know, you can take your pick of uh, font sizes that you'd like. Uh, say 22 SP maybe. Eh, I think that's... That might be a little big for some of the different ones we're going to use. I'll just stick with 18 SP. All right, fine. I'll go with 20. Great. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move the button. Uh, the button um, is going to be below the table layout. Uh, so its ID we've got set. 
Um, its text is going to be new game. Um, and then its location, whoa, we got all kinds of things set. It was set to, um, I'm just going to kind of clear out the things that got set here. Um, so I want it to be below the button table. And then what I want to do is I want to move it to be um, all the way to the right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and send it to um, align parent right. Um, and obviously I don't want it pushed far up the wall, so I'm going to add a little padding to the parent. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add, um, uh, let's just go ahead and add 15 all the way around. That should be good enough. 15 DP all the way around. That'll give us a lot of width for the buttons when they come in. Uh, a couple other things we want to set on the table. Um, you can't see the rows in it yet, um, so you're just going to have to set these in the blind. Um, First off, we want to make sure there's a little space above and below it. Um, so we're going to set the uh, tops and bottom margins. Uh, we'll just say 20 dps below um, and then 20 dps above. Um, that'll just make some space for the buttons. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want these buttons to uh, stretch. Um, so we want them to be able to stretch to fill if they need to stretch. We also want them to shrink to fill. Um, so we want them to fill uh, the content if they need to get bigger, uh, make them get bigger. If they need to get smaller, make them get smaller. Uh, just make them fit, right? So that's that's the goal there. Um, and I think we've done everything now. Um, so the padding, the background color, centered in parent, shrink stretch, top and bottom margins, um, above the table, um, and then the different ways you can do the, the gravity. Um, he's below the table and he's to the right. Cool. I think we've got uh, got that guy ready to go. Um, if you ever want to, I always put um, in the slides the uh, the XML uh, version of the solution. So if you were to look at the XML, it would it would hopefully look like all of that. Um, so now that we've got um, an XML written, uh, we're making good progress through the steps. Uh, we should be able to save this. Oops, I need a semicolon. Save this and it will no longer throw an error. Next thing we need to do is we need to add this activity to the manifest. Um, so let's just open up our manifest um, and we're going to add another activity. I'm just going to copy paste a prior one. This one is uh, for the lights out uh, activity. So make it match that. Um, and then the title for this, I think we've got a title called like main title or something like that. That'll work. So main title. So now we've registered it uh, with our manifest, which is great. Uh, and then finally, we're going to need to launch it um, from the main menu. So if we find in the main menu where we're at, um, <clears throat> we're going to have to make a new intent. Uh, so I'll just call it the play intent. Intent. This um, it's going to be the lights out class, um, and then we're going to want to put in the number of buttons. Um, so you can kind of look at what we did below for putting in the number of buttons. Uh, so we're going to put in an extra. Uh, technically, we're putting in an extra int. Um, we're going to put in using the key num buttons. Um, and we're going to pass in uh, the private member variable m num buttons. So just like what was before. Uh, this one we don't need to pass back any data, um, so we just need to run it to be honest. So if we just want to run it, uh, we can just use start activity. So it's kind of a combination of what the about button did um, plus with the uh, what the um, changing the number of buttons did. Um, and so with this little bit of code uh, that we've done here, it should launch the activity um, and you should see it on the screen. Sometimes it's fun to run things just to kind of make sure that everything's working. Um, oh, it still says three, so I need to go change that still. And when I hit play now, um, it should launch the activity. Um, but of course, my table is still empty. Um, so I'm going to have to change that. Um, but at least the activity now launches 
no force close, nothing like that. Um, and we should be good. I'm gonna go change that to seven just while I'm thinking about it. Great. Um, so now let's let's uh, let's add those buttons. Um, so there's a lot of things that we're gonna need to do. Um, and let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, some of the things we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to um, add um, the buttons uh, to a table row. Um, and then later we'll add uh, that table row uh, to the table layout. So that's our strategy. I like to put comments in here just so I kind of know what I'm doing. Another thing we're going to want to do is we need to reference these buttons. Um, and if we need to reference these buttons, um, we need to, to you know, create some type of variable uh, to hold them. Um, in this case, what I think is the easiest is to put them into an array, um, but uh, it's going to be a little easier if we go ahead and use an array list. So we're going to use an array list of buttons, um, and we'll just call it M buttons. I'm going to do uh, import uh, to bring an array list and button. Um, and then, so one at a time, we're going to have to do this process of create a button, um, add to the array list, um, add to the table row, um, and then we're going to set the on click listener. And we're going to do one more thing. Uh, that additional thing we're going to do is we're going to set the tag of the button to be an integer. Um, so buttons, um, I, well actually all views, um, they have um, a tag. Uh, the tag is just an object, uh, so it does have to be an object. So what we really want to store in is we want to just store in the, uh, the index. So starting on the left would be index 0. Um, if there are seven buttons, the far right would be index six. To make it an object, we have to make it a, an integer, so the wrapper for an int. Um, and then below, um, I guess below is where we're going to add uh, the table row. Cool, so a lot to do. Um, so <clears throat> uh, we're going to have to um, do some work. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, we need to create our um, array list. Uh, we'll just start it off as a blank array list. Uh, and this is always a step that, that students forget is you actually have to make this object. Um, so start it off blank. Uh, next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a table row. Um, I'll just call it button row. So this is the first time we've um, created a GUI object in code um, ourselves. Um, you can see that in order to create one, there are two constructors, one that receives a context um, and another that receives a context plus some attributes. Uh, we're just going to use the, the first one and the context we're going to pass in is the activity, is a subclass of a context, so we're just going to pass in this. Um, so now we've made a table row which is great. Um, <clears throat> next thing we want to do is we want to figure out how many buttons to make. Um, so we need to get uh, the extra out of the intent. Um, so that intent came through and did this out of order with the slides. Uh, the slide order is probably better. Um, so we passed that intent over and we put into it the number of buttons, um, and we need to get that out. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a private variable. Um, let's just call it m num buttons. Um, and so this dot m num buttons is equal to um, we need to get the extra out of that intent. The way you get the intent in this case is you can just say intent. Uh, past intent. Uh, we've done this once before. Get intent. And then from the uh, past intent, 
whatever was passed in, uh, we're going to get um, int extra. And the string that we're going to use, we're just going to go ahead and reuse the main menu's uh, key num buttons. Um, and if nothing was passed to us, we'll default to 7. Um, so in the other one, we defaulted to negative 1, which would make nobody selected. Here, we want to default to some sort of game, so we'll default to 7 buttons. Um, and then if you'd like, you know, you could, you could do a quick little test. Um, so we can say main menu, LLOM, so passed in um, this dot m num buttons. I feel pretty good that this is going to work, but no harm in, uh, I'm just kind of making sure. So if we pass something in, uh, we can print it out. Um, so let's just go ahead and pass in a ridiculous number first. So if we wanted to pass in, say, some crazy number. And when we run it, when we run it, it'll display that crazy number. Um, and then whenever we uh, hit play, uh, it should show us something in our in our log. So whenever I hit it, um, so it says it passed in this many buttons, which is a lot of buttons. Great. So it looks like things are working. Uh, these little tests. Um, they're really important when you're trying to follow along because it's important to know early um, that something is wrong. Um, so I feel pretty confident that it'll work, but I, I recommend you run them um, if you're if you're trying to follow along, which I hope you are. I mean, pause the video as necessary and follow along. Um, it's the best way to learn. Um, and these little tests just kind of make sure you haven't you haven't made any errors. Cool. Um, so now we're ready to start making these buttons. Um, the number of buttons we're going to make. Um, is dependent upon uh, the number of buttons we were told to make. So we're going to go ahead and make a for loop. Um, and then inside this, oops, my for loop is missing a high less than. Cool. Um, and so now we're going to go through and we're going to do some of the to do's. Um, so we're going to make a button. I'll just call it current button. Um, button is just like um, the table row we have to pass in a context, um, so that's good. Uh, next thing we wanted to do is we wanted to say set tag. Uh, and so we can set the tag. The tag you can see has to be an object, um, so you can't, you can't just say I um, because it has to be an object. Ooh, actually, um, so that did work because um, it auto-boxed it automatically. Uh, just to make it clear what's going on, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, instead of just trusting auto-boxing to do it for me, I'll say make this integer um, object uh, as a wrapper for the int. Cool. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to add it to the array list. So this dot m buttons. And the reason we're adding it to the array list is because we're going to need to change the text later. Uh, so go and add the current button. Uh, next, we need to add it to the table row. Uh, so we have a button row. Um, it's got um, a method called add view um, to where you can add a view. Um, and the view that we're going to add is the current button. Button is a subclass of view, so that works fine. Um, and so now we've added it visually, we've added a reference to it, we've set its tag. Um, the last thing we want to do is we would like to set um, its on-click listener. Um, we'll just go ahead and, we, I've, I've been doing this a lot, I've just been making the outer class uh, be the listener. Um, there are, it's funny, I think it's more common to have the anonymous inner classes, but eh, I get I get in a rut of how I do things. Uh, great, so we're going to go ahead and set its listener to be this. Um, another thing we need to do is we need to um, 
we've been building up this table, uh, which is great, or this table row, which is great, um, but we need to add this table row to the table layout. Um, so the table layout, um, so button table is what I think I called it before. So we want to grab the one that's in the XML. So we're going to say find view by ID r dot ID button table. Do a control shift O to import the table layout. Um, and then button table um, also has an add view. Um, and we're going to add uh, the button row. Cool. Um, and at this point, um, it should be visible, uh, which will be kind of neat. So let's go test that. Um, so now if we run it uh, with seven buttons, um, it should show seven buttons, which is pretty, pretty neat. Um, you can click on them, but nothing really happens. Uh, let's change it to three. Play with three buttons. Sweet. Change to nine. Play with nine. Pretty cool. Um, and this view should look good enough in portrait and layout uh, that we won't do anything special for layout. Um, obviously, we still need to get some text on here. Um, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to set our on-click listeners um, so that they're all set up. Uh, we also need to add an on-click listener for the new game button. Let's go and add the new game button um, so that it has an on-click listener. Um, so I'm going to just say uh, button uh, find view by id r dot id dot new game. Then I'm going to say set on click listener to this. Great. The last thing I'm going to want to do um, in the on create area is, um, and we'll write this function later, um, is we're eventually going to want to update the view. Um, and so we're going to make a function for update view. And, um, we'll exp and I'm going to go ahead and pass into this uh, whether the game has been won or not. Um, so I'm going to pass in whether the game has been won or not. Um, at this stage, um, the game is not won, so we'll just say false. And I'll go ahead and change it here to say did win, because that's what it's going to do. So we'll write that one later. Um, but I thought that while I was in on create, I may as well just go ahead and add it now while I'm adding stuff. Oh, I better catch up the slides. They're probably way behind. Um, so this was adding the activity, uh, starting the activity. Um, and again, the slides are really just here as your reference for later, right? Um, this was getting it out of the intent. Um, and then, oh, another thing we, <laughs> we really need to do, um, it's a good thing I catch up the slides. Um, another thing we really need to do is we're going to need to use the model view controller um, approach just like we have before. Uh, the code that we're typing is the controller. Uh, the view was the XML. Um, and then the model is like what keeps track of where the game is, like how the game moves. Um, so we've got a, um, so we're going to give this one to you. Uh, we've got a, a file you can just download. Um, it's up to version 2. Uh, this file that you can download, um, I've downloaded it a couple times. Um, it's just a, a simple little lights out game.java. Let's just go ahead and copy it in. Whenever you copy in um, a Java file like this, the only trouble is the package will probably be wrong. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. Um, but then I'm, I'm going to have to change the package uh, to match. Uh, let's see, what's the package name? Um, ooh, I have a typo in my package name. That's funny. Um, L G I H T S. Uh, this is what's nice about doing things in class. If I'd done this in class, if I'd missed those two letters in class, somebody would have immediately yelled and it's like, oh, typo. Um, so back when I made this, I apparently had a typo. I'm not going to fix it now. Um, but you will have to change the package to match your type. Uh, let's just go ahead and glance at this real quick to see what's in here. Uh, we'll just kind of see what the, the public things are. So a minimum number of buttons is three. Great. Um, a constructor. Um, great. Constructor is going to do stuff. 
uh, press button at index. Um, so whenever we press a button, we'll have to tell the model that we've pressed it. Um, you can check for when um, as a public method. Also, when you press a button, it'll tell you if you want or not. It'll pass back whether you want or not. Um, get value at index. That one's going to be the most important when we're, when we're updating the values. You can see it's going to be a 0 or a 1. Um, and then this one I added recently, um, get the number of presses. So I decided it'd be fun to um, <clears throat> to let it tell you how many times you've you've clicked and things like that. Um, if you'd like, there's also a link on here. I posted the Java doc. Um, if you prefer to look at the Java doc for how it works, that's great. It's simple enough that you can probably just look at the code though. Um, so we probably need to make a um, a game object. That'd probably help us out a whole lot. So I'm say private uh, lights out game. And I'm just going to call it uh, M game. So it's a member variable uh, for the game. Um, and then I need to create it somewhere after I've got the number of buttons that are passed in. I think this looks like a good place. Uh, so my M game is equal to uh, new lights out game. Um, and I'm going to pass it in the number of buttons. Great, so now we've got a game uh, that we'll be able to manipulate later. So I think on create should be all set. Uh, we've still got two more to write. Uh, the first thing I like to write in the on click method is just something to, to, to tell me a log message. For the on click, we're going to perform a very different action um, depending on whether it was the new game um, or whether it was one of the other buttons. Um, so we're going to we're going to start it. I'm going to go through and get my slides cut up here. Um, ooh, it looks like in the slide I made the game first, which is great. Uh, the array list. Um, here's um, how we made all the buttons. Um, updating the view at the end of on create, um, and then here's where we're at. So. Uh, we're going to make um, a switch. If it was the new game button, uh, we're going to do one thing. Um, if it was not new game, uh, we're going to assume it was one of the other buttons. Um, this assumption is fine, so long as you don't add other stuff later. <laughs> uh, we're going to assume it was just one of the other buttons. Um, and we're going to print out its tag. That's what we'll do. So, if v.get id is equal to r dot id new game then we'll do one thing if it's not the new game button we'll do something different so here we'll just print out a message we'll use the tag that we had from the from the main menu and says new game and then this one will be even more exciting uh, we'll use that same tag um, and so here we'll say button index equals, um, and we'll just print out whatever the uh, tag is. Uh, the tag is an object. It is an integer. Um, um, an integer knows it has two strings, so it'll print just fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and run it, um, and let's see if this is working. So I'll go ahead and get my, my log ready. Um, I assume it's launched. Um, so if I say play with seven buttons, um, they're all still blank. Uh, but if I click on the first one, it should say button index zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Pretty cool. If we were to change it to three buttons, we just have zero, one, and two. Um, and you know, nine buttons, the far one would be eight. So click there. Um, you can see it's, well, you probably can't see because the font's too small, but it says 8. Um, hopefully you can uh, run it and you can do the same. Um, and so this, this ability to set a tag is really pretty handy. Um, it makes it to where we don't have to go through and get the ID. Um, heck, we never even made an ID for these things. Um, so it's an easy way to know which button was pressed. So each of these is going to require a certain action. Um, if it's a new game... Um, then we'll just have to go ahead and make a new model object. So we'll say new uh, lights out game. 
and we'll just go ahead and pass back in the number of buttons. Um, so if we want to make a new game, uh, we'll just create a new game, um, and then later we'll we'll update the view, um, and we'll pass in uh, whether it was a win or not. Um, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a default value for did win false. Um, and if it's a new game, um, it'll just let that default come flying through. If they pressed on one of the buttons, then what we can do is when we when we tell the game that they pressed a button, it will it will return whether it was a win. Um, that's just an optional thing that I added in the model. Um, so it'll return whether it's a win or not, um, and we'll pass that along uh, to uh, to the update view. Uh, the button index, uh, that's the tag. Um, it might yell at me here though because um, I'm not sure if it'll recognize that auto boxing will happen. So it doesn't know that auto boxing will happen, so you have to tell it, or auto unboxing, that it's actually an integer. Um, and you need to spell things correctly. Um, integer. There we go. Great. Um, and so if you tell it that it's an integer, it says, oh, I can unbox that. That'll be fine. Um, and so we need to tell it who got pressed. Uh, you could run it at this point, but you won't see anything, um, so it won't be very exciting. So we need to see something. So the two tasks that we're going to have to update is we're going to update uh, the text on all the buttons. Um, and then we're going to have to update the text on the game state uh, text view. So those are the two major tasks. Um, also, it's good to take breaks every so often. If you haven't taken a break yet, pause the video, take a little break. Um, so let's go ahead and knock out the text on the buttons. Um, so we're going to have to loop through every button, uh, which will be no problem because we've got them in an array list. Uh, so we'll just say I less than, um, I guess we didn't really have to store the num buttons because we could also get it from the length of the array list. Um, you can get it from either either source you like. Um, so let's see here, uh, just for giggles, I'll get it from the array list. Uh, what is it on array list length? No, is it size on an array list? I always forget, yeah, it's size there. Um, it always kills me about Java how sometimes it's yeah size, sometimes it's length, sometimes it's length without a, a thing. So, all right, enough of my rant. Um, so we're going to go through um, all the buttons in the array list, um, and for each button, uh, we're going to say uh, to set. Oh, you know, I could probably use an enhanced for loop more effectively. Uh, that's all right. I'll stick with this. Um, so m buttons dot get um, value for i and what I want to do is I want to set its text um, and the thing that I want to set its text to um, is um, I'm going to go ahead and get from the game uh, get value a button index i. Uh, maybe it is handy to, to do a non-enhanced for loop um, you can see that get value, uh, what it returned um, is it returned an int. Um, so since it returned an int, uh, which was either uh, 0 or 1, I want to convert it to a string. Uh, so I'm just going to use the, the, the quick little thing that Java gives you, which is you know string plus int. Um, it'll just convert it to a string. Um, also, if you're feeling really fancy, um, you could disable the buttons when you win. This is just kind of a little extra thing. You don't have to do this. Um, but you can set whether the button is enabled or not. So set enabled. Um, and so what we want it to be is we want it to be enabled um, if the game is not won. So we kind of want, we don't want did win. We want the opposite of did win. So if they won, uh, disable. Um, so the opposite of did win. Cool. Um, and so with this, these four little lines of code, um, we should have the buttons um, that are that are updating. Obviously, the text won't change yet, but we'll be able to see the buttons. That's worth running.
So we no longer need the log because we should be able to see it. So if I click on seven, presto, I have images on all my buttons, which is pretty cool. Um, if I go through and I click on them until I win, uh, when I click here, it's going to win. Um, it should uh, not change the text yet because we haven't done that, um, but it should disable all the buttons. So whenever I click here, um, it disables them all, which is kind of neat. Um, if you hit new game, um, it um, will reload um, without a win, so that did win was false. Um, since did win was false, all your buttons come back to life. Um, and so, you know, you can play to your heart's content. Uh, I'll win with ones here. So when I win with ones, um, it disables all the buttons. It's really kind of neat to work on top of somebody else's system, because I think the disabled buttons, they look really sharp. Uh, you could also choose to do other things like flash, um, you know, the background color. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to at least change this, this text message. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we're going to make this text message. Um, we're going to use our string resources. I'm going to go and open up those string resources. You can see that I actually have six string resources that we might use. Um, whether you're playing the game, there's um, if you've taken no moves, one move, or, or more than one move, and then if you win, um, I've got a you win message. If you, if you want to keep it simple, you can just use this one. Um, but then we've also got you won and to tell you how many moves. Um, so we'll use one of the more advanced ones just for fun. So you could just use uh, the two, two simple ones. We'll use some of the advanced ones. If we're going to be playing around with resources, uh, let's just go ahead and get a reference to the resources. So get resources. Um, another thing that you notice is that a lot of these deal with the number of presses. Um, so instead of calling it every time, uh, let's just store it off. So the games um, get, what do they call it, get num presses? Yeah. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and store it off here. And then um, what I was going to do is I was going to make a new game string. Um, I'll make sure to give it some default value. Uh, and then decide what that game string should be. And then at the very end, we'll set it to the text view. Um, so set uh, the new game string to the text view. Um, so that I could go ahead and find the uh, ID for the text view. It's slightly more efficient since this function will be, get called a lot. Um, it's slightly more efficient to go and store it off during on create. Um, so I'll do that. So private, I'm going to store off the text view. Um, I'll just call it the game state uh, text view. I'll go ahead and call it game state text view. My slides will be a slightly different name, but that's okay. Um, and then I can grab this and store it off at any point um, after. You have to do it after you've set the content view. Uh, that's, the only, that's the only one gotcha, because it won't exist until after you've done that. Um, and so I'll just go ahead and grab it, capture it, I guess you could also say, and what I call it, game state text view. Great. Um, so now we've got a reference to that. Um, and then down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with it. So game state text view dot set text. Um, and I'm going to set the text to my new game string. Cool. And then, so now we're ready to figure out what does this new game string need to be. So it's going to be based on whether it was a win or not, um, and how many moves it would take. So if it was a win, um, it'll be one of these options. So if you won, um, you'll either win in one move um, or multiple moves. So if it was num presses uh, equal to one, we'll do one thing. If it was more than one press, we'll do something different. So the new game string, in this case, if it was one press, um, we're going to get the resource for um, you won one move is the resource we're going to use. So this, uh, in our resources, we're going to say get string r dot uh, string dot you won one move 
Um, and if it took more than one move, uh, we're going to use the U1 format and pass in the number of presses. These are just kind of little extras. Um, you don't have to be quite this elaborate, but, but I thought it looked sharp, so it's not hard to do. Um, so if it was a one, if it was a win, we'll present one of those. If it was not a win, um, we'll see if it was, if you've taken zero moves so far, we'll do one thing. If you've taken one move, we'll do another thing. Um, and then if you've taken more than one move, uh, we'll do something different. So in these, uh, we'll say the first one is, uh, I think it's called game start. If it was one move, um, I believe it was called game one move. Um, and if you've taken multiple moves, it's probably called game format. Um, and for this one, we need to pass in uh, the num presses. Cool. Um, and so we were a little fancy there. Um, you can see that we um, made the buttons pretty simple, um, but then the text, you know, we have these seven different possible resources we might use. Uh, let's go ahead and play it, um, and let's see if our text is going to update um, with all this fanciness. So if we play it, um, it starts off saying, make the buttons match, because I've taken no moves. Ooh, I can win this game in one move by clicking right here. So I'm going to click right here, um, and it should say, you won in one move. Cool. I didn't know if we'd be able to display that one. Cool. So make the buttons match. Um, if I click once, it'll say one move taken so far, two moves, three moves, four moves, five moves. Um, and then when I click here, it'll win in six moves. Um, you won in six moves. Cool. Um, so we actually just displayed all of them. So new game. Um, one move taken so far, two moves taken so far, so that was all of those. So it looks like um, looks like our text is doing good, um, it looks like our buttons are doing good. So pretty, pretty, pretty great. One thing that the game does, um, which um, I don't really like, and we're going to change it. Um, so we've we've kind we finished that intent. Um, so that that intent was great. One thing that the game does that I don't really like is let's say you change it to three buttons um, and then you rotate. So if you were to rotate this guy, uh, which is Control F11, uh, Control Function F11 on the Mac, um, you can see it reset to seven. Whoa, what happened there? Um, change it to five. Um, and then when I rotate, Control F11, uh, it goes back to seven. Uh, what was that all about? Uh, the reason for this is because we're not saving the state at all. Um, and with Android devices, when they rotate, um, when they rotate, it's, it's basically just like somebody hit the back key and then completely relaunch the app or the activity, which is kind of annoying. Um, it does work out nicely that if you rotate um, on these guys, so if you've got five and you rotate, um, the intent is preserved, so the intent comes with you. Uh, likewise, if you're playing here, um, it'll maintain the number of buttons. Um, if you watch the buttons closely, though, they actually did change. So zero one one one, uh, zero one zero one. So it actually changed this. Uh, we're not going to fix this one. Um, we could, but we're not going to. Um, we're just going to fix this one. So when you rotate here, um, we want that to still say nine. Um, also, if you close the app and come back, we want it to keep the number of buttons. So let's catch up the slides um, and talk a little bit about what we're going to do to save uh, that value. So catching up the slides, this was the uh, the clicking, whether it was a new game or one of the buttons. Uh, these are the actions that we took based on those. Um, for the buttons to do the updates, we added uh, the little for loop. Um, and then for the uh, game state, uh, we, had, we had a little bit more complexity uh, to figure out what we wanted those to do. Uh, you could also do other funness, right? So in the in the event of a win, you could set the background color to yellow um, or something like that. Uh, one of the students did that in their solution. I thought it looked pretty sharp. Um, and then otherwise, you know, it could go back to blue. Um, so the things that we want to change now is we want to maintain the state um, between rotations um, to make it not always reset to 7. 
One of the easiest ways to store data, there's a lot of ways to store data um, in Android. You can use um, anything that you learned about with Java IO. Uh, you can use SQLite. Uh, but if you need to store just a really small amount of simple data, uh, there's really nothing better than the shared preferences. The shared preferences are a key value coded, so it's like a, it's like a dictionary or a map, whatever you know you prefer to call it. Um, so it's key value coded. Uh, the limitations are that you can only store um, these five very basic types. So if you've got a boolean, um, a float, an int, or a long, um, or a string, and you want to store just that piece of information, it's actually quite easy. Um, so we're going to show you how to do that today. Um, using the shared preferences. We've already got a key for the button, so we're just going to use that key and we're going to store a value in. So this is the mechanism we're going to use. Um, so this is how you get information out of the shared preferences. To put information into it, um, you're going to actually create a new object called um, an editor or a shared preferences dot editor object. Um, and the editor lets you put information into the shared preferences. So you can put in a bool, a float, an int, a long, or a string. Um, once you're finished, you say commit. Uh, we'll show you how to do this in code, and it'll make even more sense. Um, but I like having the slides here as a reference. Um, so you can put in these five simple things you'll call commit. Uh, to look at the um, code that we're going to use to do this, there are two ways uh, to get the shared preferences. The first, which is slightly easier, um, is to say um, prefs is equal to get preferences. Uh, then you have to put in a mode. Um, typically, you're going to put in mode private. Um, so you're going to use a constant to use the private mode. I think that defaults to just zero. I'm not sure. Um, so we're going to get the preferences. And that would give you preferences that are local to just this activity. The other thing you could do, and this is what I did in the demo on the very first day, is you could get a named shared preference. Um, and if you give it a name, um, then um, you can see the function's different. So instead of get preferences, it's get shared preferences. Um, and so if you give it a name here, I've just called it prefs. Um, the nice thing about this second approach is it's actually available um, to everybody throughout the application. Um, so anybody could use it in the application. So we could have done this whole example with with this approach instead of passing it via intents, uh, but I wanted to teach you about intents. And then to edit it, you just say shared preference editor um, is equal to prefs.edit. What this will do is this will create a new editor object or a new editor instance um, that is connected to this shared preference. So let's go ahead and do um, some code to do this. Um, the place where we're going to save is we're going to save in the on pause method. So I'll go ahead and close some of these things. So the place where we're going to choose to save, there's a method called onPause. Uh, we'll talk more about the life cycle of activities. Um, the important ones are, um, you know, onCreate is where it starts. Um, onPause is where you should save stuff. Uh, there are a few more that we'll get to a day other than today. So we're going to override onPause. And what we're going to do in on pause is we're going to um, get the shared preferences. Um, you can choose to do it two ways. You could say get preferences, um, and you could say activity uh, mode private. Um, and then um, on the preferences, Oops, sorry, the next you would get an editor. So to get the preferences um, editor, or to get an editor for the preference, you just call edit on it. That will return a new object. So it is actually creating a new object. Oh, before I get too far, I should show you um, this would work fine. Um, another thing that would also work fine, um, I'll go ahead and show you the other way that would work fine is to get uh, a shared preference, shared preferences. And if we do that, we have to pass in a, a string. I'll just say prefs. Um, it looks like I left off the F. Uh, 
So prep, I'm just going to make a, a private static final string. Cool. So this is the other way you could get it. In this app, it doesn't matter because we're only accessing it in this one activity anyway. So either would have worked. Uh, once we've got the editor, uh, what we can do is we can put in different things. Um, so you can put in a boolean, a float, an int, a long, or a string. I'm going to put in an int. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the key, um, key num buttons. That was the key that we used for the intents, but we can reuse the same key. Nothing wrong with that. And the thing that we're going to put in is the num buttons. When you're finished changing things in the editor, uh, you need to say commit. Um, and what it'll do is it'll actually put those changes into the shared preference. Um, so this is loading those preferences in. So when you close, you load them in. The other thing you've got to do is you've got to get them out. Um, I'm going to go and copy this line here where I got the shared preferences um, up into onCreate. Uh, and then inside onCreate, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to use those preferences to set the num buttons. So pref dot get. Um, so you can get, um, well, you can get all, which will give you the map. Uh, the booleans, a bunch of other things. We want an int uh, for the num buttons. The very first time your app ever runs, it will not have a default value, or, or it won't have a preferences. So for that very first time it ever runs, it needs a default. Uh, I'm going to make the default be 7. Also, since I've set a default there, I no longer need to set it up here. So I'm just going to delete it up here. Save it. Um, and now I'm ready to, uh, to give this a go. Um, so whenever I run it, uh, for you, it should launch and it should say seven buttons. Um, for me, um, yeah, it should do the same. Um, the only reason I hesitated is because I've actually used the same package before with a, with a, in a different app um, with the same string. So it might have been a different value for me, but it was seven. Uh, I think the demo app, I had that happen to me, so I remembered my lesson. So now if I change it to, oops, if I change it to three buttons, um, and I rotate, presto, the information is now saved. Um, so I can uh, play with three buttons. Uh, three is the minimum that, uh, that you can guarantee a win. Usually pretty easy to win <laughs> with three. Um, nine's a little harder. I'll play with nine real quick. If you play this enough, you'll eventually get pretty good um, at playing, <laughs> playing linear lights out. Um, so there's a... I'll win with nine. Um, the nice thing is you can typically just kind of like chase it back and forth. Um, and with the buttons that we've chosen, you can typically get there for a win. Um, it was an interesting situation. I found that with five buttons, um, there were ways to make unwinnable solutions, uh, but the model object should take care of making them all winnable. Um, so we guarantee that they're all winnable for zero. They may not all be winnable for one. Um, so you can, you can play linear lights out to your heart's content, right? Cool. Um, so that is the end of the show. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, click through the end of the slides. Um, the references for saving the number of buttons, uh, getting the number of buttons out, and jumbo text. So we made a neat little app. Um, it has four activities. Uh, these different activities communicate. Uh, there's information being passed back and forth. Um, this activity also saves the number of buttons. Um, we didn't save the, the current puzzle, so that does go away, um, but, but we've accepted that. Um, but we've got a finished app, which is pretty cool. Um, hopefully you learned a lot about making an app with multiple screens, um, i.e. multiple activities, passing data via an intents. Um, you learned about using frame layout and relative layout. Um, you learned about using radio groups and radio buttons. Um, and then at the end here, we tacked on a little uh, shared preferences. So doing some things with the shared preferences. Cool. Um, I hope you enjoyed the example. Um, I think it was a fun one. Uh, learned a lot about intents and activities. Uh, see you next time. Uh, we're going to play around with, uh, with menus. Uh, in the class, I uh, also recommend you tackle the lab assignments. 
the lab two assignments um, are to get better at using uh, these different uh, layouts. Um, so I have you work a bunch of Google's tutorials for linear, relative, and table layout. Um, made a quick little thing about frame layout. I also wanted you to be aware that Google has a bunch of samples in there um, and how you can run one of the samples. Um, I highly recommend you play uh, Lunar Lander for a little while. Um, it's really fun. It's a lot easier to play on the, the computer. Some devices make it really hard to play. But All right, so uh, take some time to uh, work on Lab 2. Uh, that's the next thing you should do. Uh, and then we'll see you back uh, here next time when we start learning about menus. See you then.